Okay, so reasoning is just computing entailment. Um, Sonos and completes we've already talked about. Modus ponens we've already talked about. It's time to talk about resolution. Oh, God, resolution is awesome. Um, resolution is what you're going to implement for your theorem prover for the current assignment. So it's pretty important we get, we get to learn about that. Um, yeah, let's talk about that for a little bit. Resolution. Uh, where's my camera? Here we go. Uh, okay, so that's modus ponens. Um, resolution is like the big brother to modus ponens. Um, does everyone remember how to rewrite implication? How do we rewrite A implies B? Not A or B, exactly. So, um, not A or B. Yeah. Well, let's say we also had um, A or C. This is resolution. Um, actually, let me rewrite. Let me rewrite that in an even prettier way. Let's say A or not B, and then B or C. Now, the way I think about resolution, and you know, you use whatever way thinks about you. My intuition here is that. B is a proposition. It's going to be true or false. If B is true, then this part of the disjunction is going to not be true. So therefore, if, if B, then A. Okay? But what, if, what about if not B? If not B holds, then this can't hold. So then we have C. So we know, given A or not B, and B and C, B or C, that either A or C. That's the way I understand resolution. This is called this inference rule is called resolution. If you want to think in more exciting, visceral, pseudo-physical terms, you can think of the B and the not B kind of colliding in a matter meets antimatter explosion and disappearing and annihilating each other and you're left with just A or C. You know, whatever you want. So that's resolution. Resolution is sound. And if you allow these disjunctions to be arbitrarily long, so that you could have B or C or D, blah, 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 and then you just end up with this underneath. If you allow that, that's called generalized resolution. Um, it is, in fact, complete. Super handy. It's logic. Yes. And in first order logic. That's why you're implementing a resolution based theorem prover, because once you do that, you are done. Um, everyone understand resolution? It's just the big brother to modus ponens. Modus ponens, when you annihilate the A, because this is really a not A here, you annihilate the A, and all you're left with is the B. Um, so if you want, you could think of, of resolution as generalized modus ponens. Um, anyway, so that's resolution. Now, um, there are a couple different ways of, of uh, operating your knowledge base. One way is to write down everything that's true, and then just start resolving stuff together and see what happens. Do, and that's called, I don't know, unguided inference, I guess. You just start taking the stuff you know and combining it together and see what you can, else you can infer. Um, or deduce, actually, is a, probably a better, better term. Deduction is when you know stuff and you infer new stuff that's valid. That's called deduction. You're deducing things from new true things from what you know. Um, it's a very tried and true method of inference. Um, and the problem with it is that oftentimes there's lots of possible stuff you can derive. So to make life easier, a lot of theorem provers operate in a mode called refutation. And you know this from taking a class on proof and whatever. You've probably done refutation proofs. 
um, where you start off by assuming the opposite of what you really want, and then you derive a contradiction. So it's proof by contradiction or proof by refutation. Um, theorem provers work the same way. So in fact, the theorem prover you're going to write is a, ref a resolution refutation theorem prover. So you're going to stick in, you're, you, 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 instead of just deducing new things that are true, you, you start off with an actual question, like you want to know if foo is true. So what you do is you take not foo, you add it to your knowledge base, and you see if you can cause an explosion. And if you can, and you trusted your knowledge base in the beginning, then you know that foo is in fact true. Okay, let's talk about that a uh, little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, that's the next slide. Um, so if you have some question like alpha for your KB, you're wondering, gee, is alpha entailed by my KB? Is it true given what I know? Can I you know, validly infer that it's true? Um, then one thing you can do is say, gee, if I take not alpha, and I stick it into my KB, does this thing blow up? Are there any models left? Are there any worlds in which the KB is true and not alpha is true? If there are no worlds in which these are both true, then alpha must be true. Okay, the, the term for there is a, a model uh, is also called satisfiable. So a bunch of formulas is satisfiable if there exists a model. Some world in which they're all true. So determining satisfiability in propositional logic is actually a huge problem that's seen a lot of, of, a lot of work. Resolution is refutation complete for propositional logic. So if you use, if you use resolution, um, in a refutation style, you will be able to determine uh, the entailment of, any, of everything that's actually entailed, which is handy. What I want to do now is prove something. So uh, you have resolution, right? I'll, I'll write it again over here just so you have it. Um, alpha or beta, and then not beta or gamma. Uh, gives you alpha or gamma. Okay, so resolution refutation, uh, what we try and do is you, you put in the reverse of what you want to prove. Like if we want to prove unicorns are magical, then we're going to add to our KB not magical. All right, what I like to do is number all the sentences to make life easy. And now we're going to do resolution. And we're going to try and derive a contradiction. And a contradiction is when the result of resolution is the empty clause. So for example, if we resolve 6 and 7 against each other, what are we going to get? Whoa, 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 let's start with Jeff. Uh, so, sorry, six and seven together give us not horned. Okay, excellent. Uh, Jonathan, what, what should we resolve with this? We're trying to get down to the empty clause. Pick something. I would suggest something with an H in it somewhere. Yeah, so the one you just created. Yep. And five. Let's call that eight. Eight and five. Uh, whoa, eight and five together give us not mammal. Let's call that nine. Uh, who's next? Evan. Um, three. Three uh, is going to give us mythical. Call that ten. Joe.
Okay. Uh, Tyler. This is 11 with against 2. Gives us mythical again. We already knew that. So that's, that's, you can imagine the terror you would be feeling if you were taking a, a midterm exam right now. And you're like, ah, circular, help. Okay, uh, Dylan. We're trying to annihilate. If we had like this and not mythical, that would be beautiful. That's what we want. So we have a whole bunch of things. This next resolution you do doesn't have to involve 10. It could involve something else if you wish. Okay, so let's do 8 and 4. Um, gives us, oh, look at that. And then we do, I think I can fill in the blanks here. Uh, this and what, wait, whoa, 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 sorry. If I write down the wrong thing. Eight and four is not uh, immortal. And then uh, verses 11. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is supposed to be 12. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so glad I'm not taking an exam right now. Eight and four gives us not immortal, which is number 12. And then we do 12 against 11. And the empty clause is written like that. That symbol, that symbol is called bottom. There's another one called top, which is the same thing turned upside down. Yeah, exactly. So that's a resolution refutation proof right there, OK? Now everyone knows how to do resolution refutation proofs. Excellent. Now we're going to turn to first order logic. Now that you are totally comfortable in propositional logic. Now we're going to do the same thing over again, but just in first order logic, which is way more fun. Way more fun. Any questions about resolution, refutation, theorem proving? You take the thing you want to prove, you negate it, you throw it in, you derive bottom. And the nice thing about this approach, resolution, refutation, is you know what you're shooting for. When you're just doing unbounded deduction of like, let's resolve everything that resolves and see what happens. Um, it's like you're not necessarily shooting for some goal. Whereas resolution refutation proving, you know you're always trying to get to bottom. So like you might tend to prefer to resolve short things against each other because when you resolve things, like parts of them disappear and they're getting shorter and shorter and shorter and pretty soon, poof, they'll vanish and you'll have bottom. So uh, it's very directed in that sense. Like you know what the goal state is if you Excuse me for being a search person. Um, like you have a heuristic to guide you towards shorter and shorter things. Jeff, did you have a question? Uh, okay. 